Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. I hope you guys are having a great time. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. All I ask is after watching and or listening to the video, if you find you enjoyed it or you learned something, do me a favor, smash that like button and consider subscribing. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Today, I just want to give a huge shout out to my members, my Patreons, and anyone who's ever given me a super chat. Thank you so very much for your support. When I say it means the world to me, I'm not overstating it. Long before the idea for the movie Rust was born in the imaginations of Joel Souza, and Alec Baldwin, the son of martial arts actor Bruce Lee, Brandon Lee, died as a result of an accidental shooting on a movie set. It was March 30th of 1993, and 28-year-old Brandon was starring in The Crow, a supernatural superhero film. Brandon died after his co-star, actor Michael Massey, pointed a prop Smith & Wesson Model 629 caliber Magnum revolver at him and fired. The weapon was loaded with a blank. FYI, a blank is a firearm cartridge that, when fired, does not shoot a projectile like a bullet or a pellet. Instead, a blank generates a muzzle flash and an explosive sound like a normal gunshot would. In the scene where Brandon was injured, he was getting fired upon by his co-star, Michael Massey. What Brandon's death has in common with that of cinematographer Helena Hutchins is that it was preventable. It never should have happened, and it cut short the life of a rising star in the film industry. The blank fired at Brandon had been created from a previously live cartridge. Its gunpowder charge had been removed by the special effects crew, but the crew failed to remove the primer. When the weapon was fired, one round ignited, sending a bullet fragment barreling toward and into Brandon Lee. Specifically, it slashed into his lower abdomen. According to Dr. Michael Hunter of the show Autopsy, which I absolutely love, most people suffering from a single gunshot wound to the abdomen survive. When the freak accident occurred on the set of The Crow at approximately 12.30 a.m. in the Wilmington, North Carolina area, the same chaos and confusion filled the set as it filled the church on the Rust set. No one immediately knew what had happened or who was at fault. I'm sure Michael Massey, who pulled the trigger on Brandon, was just as devastated as Alec Baldwin was when he realized that Helena Hutchins was seriously injured. Brandon, despite being in lean, mean, fighting condition, was an occasional smoker, and during his autopsy, it was revealed that he suffered from moderate coronary artery disease. Smoking could be why Brandon had a significant amount amount of rubbery yellow plaque in 50% of his coronary blood vessels. I find it shocking because this dude was only 28 years old and he was so healthy and fit, but not even a guy like Brandon could out-train the effects of smoking. In Lee's autopsy report, it listed the primary cause of death as a gunshot wound to the abdomen. But again, according to Dr. Hunter, more than 90% of victims of this type of wound survive. Brandon loved doing his crazy and dangerous stunts himself. On The Crow, he even subjected himself to being covered in ice so that he could almost experience what it's like to be dead and then come back to life which is exactly what his character did. He wanted to see how long he could tolerate the freezing cold and how his body would react to it. According to Dr. Hunter, this experiment put Brandon at risk. Apparently, significantly lowered body temperature can cause the heart and other organs and the nervous system to enter a state of shock. 
But Dr. Hunter didn't think this ice stunt contributed in any way to Brandon's death. Another factor that may have led to the accident was the pressure to make a blockbuster movie on a tight schedule and a tight budget. In the scene where Brandon was injured, it was him as the crow coming into an apartment and finding his on-screen girlfriend being attacked by several bad guys. Ironically, it's in this scene that the character, the crow, gets killed. And it's also the scene that led to Brandon's death, ultimately. At this point, the crew was 50 days into an exhausting schedule. The crew was also shooting in a big industrial building, and apparently it was exceptionally cold and dark inside. Not an easy environment to be in for very long shooting days. Bei Ling, Brandon's on-screen girlfriend, said it was almost like hell. The shooting schedule had been moved to nighttime at this point which added a layer of fatigue to the situation. The crew would have breakfast at 9 p.m., lunch at midnight, and dinner at 5 a.m. This brutal schedule proved difficult to adjust to for pretty much all the crew members. Everyone was feeling exhausted at this point, and their minds were not clear. Bei Ling described it as almost feeling like you were on drugs. Logic and reason were diminished, after Brandon's death, an anonymous crew member reported just how bad the exhaustion levels were. The crew member stated that the shooting days were often 18 hours long, back to back, six days a week. In the crew member's mind, this was an accident waiting to happen, and mistakes had already occurred on the set. For example, a carpenter who was in one of those cherry pickers backed up into power lines. The carpenter actually caught on fire. Miraculously, the guy didn't die. The utility truck also burned on the set. Another crew member drove a screwdriver through his hand accidentally, and then a sculptor working on the set became disgruntled and went apparently nutty cuckoo on the back lot. All of this sounds similar to the rushed and unsafe work environment on the movie Russ, where two misfires happened before the tragic accident that led to Helena Hutchins' death. By the way, beautiful Helena left behind her devastated attorney husband, Matt, and their then nine-year-old son, Andros, who looks so much like his mother. On Rust, a half a dozen camera people walked off the set that morning, the morning of the accident. They were angry about not being paid on time, about their hotel, which was something like an hour away from the set, and also about the lax behavior on set when it came to safety, in particular, firearm safety. When it came time to film Brandon Lee's final scene, some crew members felt the film was cursed. Everyone on set was tired, as I said. Their nerves were frazzled. The crew was going to do some rehearsals before shooting the actual scene. And as I said, in the scene, Brandon was supposed to enter an apartment and then fall to his knees after getting shot by the character played by Michael Massey. Ironically, this wasn't a scene with a lot of people in it, nor were there multiple firearms. In fact, the scene involved just one weapon. Prior to this scene, the crew had shot very complex scenes where there were many characters firing at Lee's character. So it was truly shocking when an accident occurred in this very simple scene. There were to be no explosions. The handgun was loaded with a blank round so it would look and sound real but not fire an actual bullet. It was decided, however, that a full load blank should be used because that would create the maximum flame and smoke from the barrel. Just FYI, blanks are made by taking a certain amount of gunpowder, putting it in a cartridge, and then putting in a wad of paper instead of a bullet. In this way, no one should get hurt. Because no bullet was at the end of the cartridge on this blank, the scene was considered safe. And for this reason, Brandon did not wear a bulletproof vest, which he had worn in the other scenes. This would prove to be a tragic mistake. 
Despite it being a blank, actor Michael Massey was told not to shoot directly at Brandon, and Massey also needed to be at least 15 feet away from Lee. So this crew was following some safety protocols. The crew took the time to discuss how and when the gun would be fired, and rehearsals took place. So the crew was ready and fully prepped when it was time to film the scene. Brandon was waiting to enter the apartment, and he was talking to a grip excitedly about his upcoming wedding. Everything was normal, according According to the crew. The grip then asked Brandon why his girlfriend in the scene wasn't heard screaming before he entered the apartment, and it was a legitimate question. So Brandon decided to wear a Walkman, that's how you listen to music back then, that would make it believable that when he entered he had no clue that his girlfriend was being harmed. A small explosive bag of fake blood was placed inside a bag of groceries that Brandon's character was carrying. The bag of fake blood was supposed to explode when the blank was fired at Brandon to simulate him being injured. At approximately 12.30 a.m., the director called out the word action, and the scene began with the bad guys attacking the crow's girlfriend. Brandon gets the cue to enter the apartment. As he steps through the door, the Massey character spins around and fires the prop weapon in Brandon's direction. The bag of fake blood explodes, and right on cue, Brandon falls down, but not to his knees as rehearsed. Instead, he falls down against the wall. The scene plays out. The director then calls cut. But unbeknownst to everyone, Brandon was actually injured, and his collapse to the floor was real. It took the crew a hot minute or two to realize that Brandon wasn't acting. He wasn't getting up, and he wasn't talking. His eyes were glazed over, and he seemed to be staring into space. It wasn't until the stunt coordinator checks on Brandon that the injury is discovered. Everyone thought this was a joke on Brandon's part. The stunt coordinator nudged Brandon, but he didn't move. A set medic was called, and when he asked Brandon if he was okay, he got no response. This is when everyone realized that something was very, very wrong. The medic thinks maybe Brandon is suffering from spinal shock, which would mean that his brain could not get signals to his heart. As precious minutes go by, someone notices a small hole on Brandon's shirt which wasn't there before and wasn't part of his character's wardrobe. They lifted up Brandon's shirt and noticed a slit in his lower abdomen just below his belly button. Strangely, no blood was seeping out. They thought maybe the bag of fake blood exploded into Brandon's stomach, causing this injury, but the back of the grocery bag was still intact. Brandon's stomach then begins to distend. His blood pressure drops and his vital signs quickly deteriorate. Brandon was losing blood, but it was pooling inside his lower abdomen, hence the reason his belly became distended. But how could a blank cause this injury? At 1 a.m., Brandon arrived at the hospital. He was close to death at this point. In fact, he had to be resuscitated and given oxygen in order to remain alive. Brandon was quickly x-rayed, and the images revealed that a bullet had entered his abdomen with enough velocity to rupture the small and large intestines and tear critical blood vessels. The bullet had lodged in the fifth lumbar vertebrae. This vertebrae would mean that Brandon lost the function of his hips and legs. Brandon was transfused with a total blood volume equal to that of five men. Surgeons were desperately trying to stop the bleeding. For six hours they tried and tried, but Brandon had been injured in the aorta and his vena cava. If the wound was an inch to the left or the right, Brandon likely would have survived. Twelve hours after arriving at the hospital, at 1.03 p.m. the next day, Brandon Lee died. The accident traumatized the entire crew. No one could figure out how a blank had caused this fatal injury. It turned out 
that the weapon that killed Brandon had been loaded previously with dummy bullets, fake bullets with supposedly no power to propel. However, the special effects crew had incorrectly improvised those dummy bullets from live ammunition, allowing a small explosion to occur. The force of the explosion was enough to lift the bullet off the cartridge, but not to propel it out of the barrel. That happened in an earlier scene. So basically, a lead tip was stuck in the barrel of the revolver, and no one noticed it. That lead tip sat there until Brandon's final scene. The final scene occurred two and a half weeks after the lead tip was unknowingly propelled into the barrel of the weapon. That same gun was then loaded with a blank for the bedroom scene where Brandon was shot. When Michael Massey pulled the trigger, a full load of live powder charges explodes, shooting the bullet that had been trapped in the barrel with pretty much the same force of a live round. The lead tip went straight into Brandon's lower abdomen, tearing vital blood vessels. It hit both Brandon's abdominal aorta and his vena cava. The surgeons then had little power to stop the bleeding. Had the armorer on the crow thoroughly checked the weapon before filming the scene, and had he cleaned the barrel, Brandon Lee's tragic death could have been avoided. In the case of the crow, the prosecutor decided that Brandon Lee's death was an accident, and the prosecutor opted not to charge anyone on the crew with a crime. Perhaps that prosecutor did not believe that there had been a flagrant pattern of safety violations throughout the filming of the crow. In the case of Rust, the prosecutor took a different stance when it came to firearm safety and decided there was gross negligence on the part of the arm. Armorer Hannah Gutierrez, the assistant director David Halls, and actor slash executive producer Alec Baldwin. The prosecutor in North Carolina working on the Crow case had considered filing charges against the film production company, but ultimately decided against it. The district attorney wrote back in 1993, quote, There's no evidence pointing to the kind of negligence the criminal law seeks to punish. The kind of negligence the law seeks to punish is the kind described as willful and wanton. You just can't find that, end quote. Actor Michael Massey spoke to the Telegraph newspaper in 2005 about how he struggled after the accident. No one blamed him, but he said he didn't think it's something that you can ever get over. But again, had the weapon been properly cleaned, the accident would not have happened. So in my mind, that is negligent on the armorer's part. Helena Hutchins' husband said that what was very upsetting to him was that Alec Baldwin told George Stephanopoulos in a December 2021 interview that, quote, someone is responsible for what happened, and I can't say who that is, but I know it's not me, end quote. It's not me, Mr. Investigator. It's some other guy or some other gal. In saying this, Baldwin seems to take zero responsibility for his role in the accident. As I see it, Baldwin, as the executive producer, not the actor, failed to ensure an experienced armorer was hired to work on a film that had a lot of scenes with firearms and gun battles. Baldwin also failed to make it clear to all the crew members that safety protocols would be followed to the book even if it meant slowing down the production. And one of those rules was to ensure that no live rounds were found on the set. Another was that at least one other person would check the firearm to ensure no live rounds were in it. Brandon Lee and Helena Hutchins both didn't need to die. Had the crews followed all safety protocols, those two precious human beings would likely still be alive. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories.